Global warming. Most of us have read the articles, heard the reports and have an opinion. There's a lot of information around, so what should we believe? Well, to help us sort out the scientific from the sensational, my studio guest is meteorologist Augie Au. Welcome to the programme, Augie. Thank you, Bob. Uh, actually, you're a meteorologist and an atmospheric scientist. I mean, what's the difference between the two? They sound very impressive. Probably about 25,000 a year is, is, <laughs> is the which difference. Is the, which one do you earn more on? <laughs> the atmospheric scientist. OK, idea. well, that sounds impressive. Perhaps you could start by defining a couple of terms for us. Sure. Uh, one of them is global warming and the other is the greenhouse effect. So can we start with global warming? What is that? And we could even throw a third one in there, perhaps. We see this issue of climate change. Mm. And I noticed, uh, you know, your, your first guest talking about uh, climate change. He doesn't talk about global warming mm. uh, in a few press releases. Uh, there's a subtle little difference there. Climate's always been changing. Uh, it gets colder, it gets hotter, it gets drier, it gets wetter. We know that. Uh, it wouldn't be climate if it didn't change. Yeah. Uh, the global warming in the context it's used today, I think, implies the catastrophic end of it. Uh, you know, temperatures that warm, uh, you know, if not upper digits, 8, 9, 10 degrees, whatever, that sort of a, of a problem area. Um, it is true that the planet is warming, but in the last hundred years, for example, six-tenths of a degree, six tenths of a degree. Mm. So that if you, you can get that difference, for example, walking from one room of your house to another, mm. uh, that difference. Is that catastrophic? I don't think so. So global but, warming uh, is designed to be more emotive. Than oh, I think simple. it is. I think the term and the way it's sold to the public today, mm. yes, mm. very emotive. And then... Uh, greenhouse effect? The greenhouse effect. Now, now that's one you got to spend some time on. That We're led to believe today that the greenhouse effect is, is a bad thing. The fact of the matter is, Bob, it's a near miraculous process that keeps life sustainable on the planet. Mm. We're the only planet that has one that operates that way. Mm. And it keeps the planet at a nearly constant temperature uh, by trapping the outgoing radiation and, you know, re radiating it back, keeping mm. it level, constant, smooth. If we didn't have it, the planet would be at minus 18. Minus 18. We'd be literally the third rock from the sun. Mm. Uh, but because we do, we're kept at around 15 degrees Celsius. Um, that's a 33 degree difference now. And we just simply wouldn't have life without it. And, you know, you have to carry that one step further. People say, well, okay, that's the process, but CO2 is going to run away with us and kill us all. And so the main constituent gas in the greenhouse process is water vapor. Steam, if you want, water vapor, mm -hmm. which uh, uh, basically is, is a life-giving gas as well. Mm -hmm. Keeps things, without water vapor, without water, we wouldn't have a life here again. Okay, now that was one of the claims that was made in Al Gore's movie, uh, which, you know, which was the whole thing about carbon dioxide emission sure. and how it's, it's getting greater. But, but I've read, for example, that the carbon dioxide emission is already at the maximum, that it's not actually having any effect. Well, that's right. You have to, you're right. And can I explain just a wee bit further what, you, what I think you mean by that? Uh, that's right. Water vapor accounts for 95% of the uh, greenhouse process. 95%. Mm. So that only lets a wee bit of 5% left. Of that 5%, there are all the other gases put in there, like methane, like CO2, mm. like nitrous oxide, laughing like, gas. Like cows? Yeah, cows, yeah. right, exactly. Yeah. Uh, and, and of that 5%, CO2 is about 3.6 percent, 3.6 percent, and if you look at what fraction of that is man-made, mm. it's another about three and a quarter percent. So do your maths, three and a quarter percent of 3.6 percent is about decimal one two percent mm. caused by man. We don't need to worry about it, but I'm not answering your question because you're right. You know what a curve of diminishing returns is? For example, it, it increases very rapidly and finally hits a point. I'll do it the way you can see. Yeah. It, it goes up where it levels off. It's a bit and, like exercise. Yeah, exercise. Yeah, yeah. Well, suppose you had a business, you know, and you, you were selling widgets. Yeah. And you finally sold, figured out that whether you sold 100 widgets a week or 1,000 widgets a week, yeah. you wouldn't make any more. You know, your profit return because it took more to deliver them, mm. took more to store them mm. cost-wise. 
That's the way it is. Another analogy I can use, and I love this, uh, Krista Friedis uses this, and that's about painting a window. If you want to keep the yeah. sunlight out, yeah. you've put your first coat of paint on, okay, it diminishes the sunlight, but some still gets through. You put a second coat of paint on, a little bit less light can you know, come in. You're starting to darken the window. By the time you're up to 10, 12 coats, it doesn't make any difference. Mm. The window's uh, you know, going to be as opaque as it's mm. going to be. Mm. CO2 is the same way. The first 100 to 150 parts per million, mm. that's the way it's measured, contribute to the greenhouse effect. And beyond that, as you so aptly stated, the effect begins to diminish off. It doesn't mm. really matter. We all are panicking about this global warming. Just about every politician is getting in behind it. We've got the UN behind it. We've got reports coming out left, right and centre. Everybody thinks that icebergs are melting, water levels raising and it's getting hotter. But How have they been able to achieve that? Well, let me, let me put it back to you. Do you feel hotter? Have you seen the oceans come up? No. And how do you interpret the icebergs? Most people, when they see an iceberg, you don't think of a heat wave, you think mm. of something cool. Mm. So here's an iceberg floating up off Timaru now, okay? <laughs> and we hear first time in 70-some years, okay? Mm. I prefer to look at that second time in 70-some years. We mm. saw one in 1931, we're seeing one again. We're not seeing anything new. Mm. And all these predictions that you mentioned, how hot it's going to get, how much the sea level is going to come up, and uh, whatever the third one was, <laughs> uh, they're all in the, uh, in the computer, I should say. They're all based in the computer predictions. And these things are what all these predictions are being made upon. Uh, we haven't seen any evidence of this. There's absolutely nothing going on uh, that hasn't happened before in the planet. And yet we're hearing these claims as if they're all new and all first time. And again, I'll come back. Uh, when you look at the reasoning for this, the CO2, and again, the greenhouse runaway effect. I'm sorry, but I look at that and I think nature is pretty complex, pretty beautiful in that design. Mm. And I called it a near miraculous uh, process before and I'll repeat that. The greenhouse effect is not harmful. Why is all this persisting? Someone has an agenda. Someone is trying to play upon guilt of people and fear. Okay. And look back historically, and those are two very strong emotions, because physically and scientifically, it just isn't there. Yeah, let's take a quick break, and let's come back and all talk right. about that fear and also the role of nature in all of this global warming. Right. My guest is Augie out. Back in a moment.